There is a very common pattern in mathematics that keeps popping up in many different domains. It often takes the form of a sandwich formula like this one, where you sandwich one thing in between two other things that are each other's inverses. We already encountered this pattern in the context of groups and conjugacy, but it occurs in a diversity of other contexts as well. The main idea is this. You find yourself in front of a really difficult problem to solve. You could try to solve it directly, but that seems too hard. Instead, you decide to first transform the problem into a much simpler form. Solving it becomes a lot easier. Finally, you transform the solution back into the original form. That's what the inverse in the sandwich is for. More than a thousand years ago, mathematicians would solve problems by explicitly spelling out their reasoning in long-winded paragraphs. They would start from a word problem like, I'm three times as old as my son, but ten years from now I will be twice as old. How old am I? Then they'd solve such a word problem by spinning long sentences. You know, given that my age is three multiples of the age of the sun, then the difference between my age and the age of the sun must be two multiples of the age of the sun, etc., etc., yada, yada, yada. This process ultimately leads to the correct result. But it's cumbersome, and it offers very little insight into what is going on. In modern classrooms around the world, high school students learn a much better and more systematic approach. You first translate the word problem into algebraic equations. Then you can just mechanically apply the rules of algebra to find the solution. You might argue that this blind application of algebraic rules doesn't offer any more insight than human language, but I would have to disagree. To me, every step makes perfect sense. You apply the same thing to the left and to the right of the equation, with the goal of bringing the unknown to one side and everything else to the other side. This is much more logical and meaningful than several paragraphs of ambiguous text that could contain subtle mistakes. Either way, High school teachers will often urge you to translate the solution back into words. The original problem was formulated in words, and we want the solution in the same format. So after moving to an easier domain and solving your problem there, you have to come back at the end. This is why I started calling this pattern there and back again. Also because I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. The there and back again pattern is extremely common in math. I have often been surprised at how versatile it is. Say I ask you to find the equation for the line that goes through a given point and has a given slope. The tricky part is finding the correct y-intercept where the line cuts the y-axis. I'm sure there is a standard formula for this, but I don't remember it. I don't want to remember it. And I don't have to. There's an easier way. Step one is always to transform the problem into a simpler one. Do you see a way to instantly make this problem easier? Well, it would be much easier if the line could go through the origin instead of the other point. Okay, well, let's just make that happen. If you want something in math or in life, find a way to get it. So our first step will be to move the given point to the origin. The problem then becomes trivial. The slope of the line is just the coefficient of x. And then we have to remember to move back to the original point. We do that by subtracting its coordinates from y and x. Then it's just a matter of working out the parentheses. And there's your answer. This is a very easy to understand way of finding the correct value for the y-intercept. You don't have to remember any formulas. You just have to commit to making your life easier. It's almost a way of living rather than just a mathematical trick. Can you write your name upside down? That seems like something that would take a lot of practice. Unless you first flip the page. Then just write like you always do and flip it back. Done. 
Do you need to rotate an object around a given point? Move the object to the origin first. Rotating around the origin is easy. There is a matrix for that. Then move back, et voila. Once you start looking for this pattern, you see it everywhere. There are more advanced examples, of course, like the Fourier transform and the Laplace transform. You have a complicated sound and you want to make it less sharp? You first calculate its Fourier series, which is just a sum of sine waves. This makes it much easier to remove higher frequencies. Just throw them out of the sum. Then you transform this sum back into a sound by just adding together all the remaining sine waves. We made an entire video about this process, so check it out if you want to learn more. To solve a complicated linear differential equation, you can use the Laplace transform to turn it into a simpler algebraic equation. Solve it using high school algebra or linear algebra. Then use the inverse Laplace transform to get the solution. Here is another cool example. If you have a line or a triangle or some other geometric object, it just hangs around on the plane. It doesn't really do anything. To transform it, you need a second object, like a matrix or a function that actively operates on the first object. So you always have this distinction between objects and operations. One of the amazing things about geometric algebra is that it makes this distinction go away. Points and lines are not just passively sitting there, they are active, they make things happen. A line, for example, can reflect other objects over itself. And if you're wondering how it manages to do that, the answer is the sandwich formula. You first write down the line. In geometric algebra, this represents a reflection of the entire plane. Then, on that reflected plane, you write down an object such as a triangle. Finally, you write down the inverse of the line, which flips everything back into place, including the triangle. Oh, and you also need a minus sign here, which is related to the fact that the reflection changes the orientation. So when you calculate this sandwich product, the result will be the triangle reflected over the line. It's very similar to how you write your name upside down by first flipping the entire page, then writing your name, and then flipping back. Every transformation in geometric algebra works in exactly the same way. Once you know how to reflect over a line, you can use two lines to create a rotation. This is done with a double sandwich. And it also cancels the minus signs so that the original orientation is restored. So in geometric algebra, we no longer have to invent any separate transformations. The objects themselves already take care of that. They serve double duty. The magic of the sandwich formula makes this all possible. I realize that this is still vague and mysterious. I haven't explained where this formula comes from or why it works so incredibly well, or how you can multiply shapes with each other. Don't worry, we will go into much more detail later. Here I just wanted to give you a cool example that shows just how powerful the there and back again pattern is. We are planning a series on geometric algebra to be published on YouTube after linear algebra and tensor algebra. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss those videos. And while you're doing that, could you quickly hit the like button as well? Thanks. In an earlier video, I showed you how to project vectors onto a slanted line. When preparing for that video, I had to figure out the exact contents of the matrix that represents this projection. So I did what you would always do. I followed the basis vectors. They get mapped here and here. It takes a bit of trigonometry and triangle chasing to find the correct coordinates for these points. 
nothing too difficult, but still quite a bit of work. Then I just ploinked those coordinates into the columns of my matrix and I had what I wanted. I realized much later that I could have made my life a lot easier by first rotating the slanted line into a horizontal position. The projection then just sets all y coordinates to zero, which is ridiculously easy. Finally, of course, you have to rotate back. Remember that matrices operate from right to left. So we first rotate with a simple rotation matrix. Then we drop the y coordinate with this extremely simple matrix. And then we rotate back. The product of these matrices gives exactly the same result as before, but without any of the trigonometry and triangle chasing. I can't believe that I didn't see this right away. It would have saved me a lot of time. The same trick also works very well for a reflection. First, rotate into a much simpler position. Then, do a trivial reflection. And then rotate back into the original position. You can verify that the result is exactly the same as the one we had in that earlier video. This time you do still need some trigonometry to simplify the matrix at the end. Take a look at the matrices in the middle of the sandwich. They are both extremely simple, much simpler than the one on the left. And that is of course the entire point of this pattern. The middle matrices also happen to be diagonal, so they each simply stretch the plane horizontally and vertically. In the case of the projection, the y-coordinates are stretched by a factor of zero, which is exactly what you would expect. In the next video we will call the diagonal elements the eigenvalues of the matrix. We will use them to study the long-term behavior of linear systems, such as animal populations in an ecosystem. You can already watch that video on Patreon. The link is in the description below. We need your support in order to make more videos, so please do consider setting up an account. Thank you. We can write both of these sandwich products in this form. The B on the right rotates the slanted line to horizontal, and the inverse of B on the left rotates it back at the end. But there is a subtly different way of doing the whole thing. Instead of rotating the line, we could also rotate our coordinate system. This is a subtle distinction, so I will take it slow. Imagine that the line is just a chopstick that you've placed on a tabletop. It hasn't been glued to the table, so you can easily move it around. Rotating it to horizontal is no problem at all. But what if the line had been painted on the street? You can't just move the line, it's fixed. Instead of moving the line, we have to move ourselves. We rotate our own frame of reference, our basis vectors, our coordinate system. The line itself just stays in the same place. So we have two different approaches. The line makes an angle theta with the horizontal. If we decide to rotate it back to horizontal, we have to use a rotation matrix over minus theta. We call this rotation matrix B for backwards. If instead we decide to rotate our basis vectors, we need a rotation over plus theta. We call this rotation matrix F for forwards. F takes us from the old basis to the new one, and B takes us back. Of course F and B are each other's inverses, so you may encounter many different versions of the formula. Keep this in mind when solving a word problem or doing physics calculations. You always have to make sure that you know whether you're going forward or backward. In most cases, we don't want to change the physical universe, we just want to change our mathematical model of the physical universe. And so in practice, the forward direction is most common. It changes the basis vectors, not the line or any other physical objects. So this, finally, is what our pattern looks like in linear algebra.
It's a sandwich product that takes us forward to the new basis, where we can do whatever we like, and then we go back to the original basis. The reflection over the slanted line is now decomposed into three easier parts. A basis change, a reflection over an easier line, and the reverse basis change. The two reflection matrices are called similar. Whenever one matrix can be written like this, as a sandwich with a different matrix in the middle, we say that those two matrices are similar to each other. Geometrically, they perform exactly the same linear transformation, a reflection over the line. We just look at this transformation from two different coordinate systems. Our perspective changes, but the transformation itself doesn't. The All Angles channel is all about changing your perspective, looking at things from different angles. The There and Back Again pattern is an excellent example. I hope that you will start seeing it everywhere, and that you will be able to use it to make your mathematical life easier when faced with a difficult challenge. Finally, I should mention something else about similar matrices. Because they really represent the same linear transformation, they have exactly the same geometric properties. For example, two similar matrices always have the same determinant. That's because they both scale the plane by the same amount. So even though these two matrices look completely different, their determinant is identical. The same goes for their trace, their eigenvalues, and many other properties. These properties are called invariants under a change of basis. We will use this in the next video, where we will find the eigenbasis for a matrix. Moving to the eigenbasis makes everything trivially easy, so it's a perfect example of our pattern. I hope you will join me there. Please subscribe and like this video, and set up a Patreon account if you want to support the production of our videos. And whatever else you decide to do, always keep learning.